Uh, my name is Eder. I'm senior software engineer by Red Hat from from Brazil. I'm leader of Uberfire, and Uberfire is built to build uh, Druze and JBPM, the product BMS and BPMS. And I'm here to talk to you not about my products, but about how to build design patterns in Java with functional programming. Uh, the first one, I will go straight ahead. And that's one of my passions. Maybe the fonts will look weird because I just changed my laptop right now. The first one will be a strategy. What your strategy should look if I'm moving from our oriented objected software to a functional programming. Usually a strategy, uh, you use to define a family of algorithms, encapsulate each one, and make them interchangeable. I love the definition, but I prefer to do that and to learn that by example. So let's see uh, and show an uh, example. In our example, you have a shopping cart, and this shopping cart has a lot of items. Uh, here I add two items, item one, item two to my shopping cart, and I have to select and change, select the algorithm through the, um, to the payment. I have to, ch to ch select if there is a credit or debit. Here I'm passing as a parameter for the method of pay, but the, the code will start to look weird because I have two type of pay payments, credit and money, and then I have to do everything with a if selector, if, else, if, if, else, if. It looks really good for now, but the issue will start when I have to add more payment types for that class. I will start to have a lot of else ifs, and probably every buyer see that kind of code that create a big chain of if, else if, and else if, and my code becomes a mess. And doing that is good, but the problem is that we violate with that the single response principle. Why? Because when you have a payment, we have to change uh, the payment method. We have to add something in the payment method. My class shopping cart used it to work very well, but as soon as I add a payment, I have to remember and to add a new else if there. That is really bad for the code and really bad for the clean code. It's not a clean code as well. There is a solution in ob object-oriented programming with the strategy pattern and how you do, do in that presentation. You take the original patterns from the the uh, object-oriented programming and move them to be better with functional. But how that that strategy pattern looks in the object-oriented code? I create an interface payment and just a method pay that receive an amount, and then I create a lot of implementations that each implementation has the behavior of the, my payment. A credit card has this implementation that's just a demo to, to fit in the slide, and my money has uh, my, uh, another implementation. And that is really good because when I do that, I just, just change the payment method. Instead of paying, uh, receiving a, a enum and making a lot of if, else, if, else, if, else, I can have an implementation of the class and just call the implementation. That is really good why uh, the strategy pattern, because with a single responsible pattern, when I add a new uh, payment method, I don't have to change my shopping cart. But in the end, for instance, if I sh create a new type like debit card, I just have to add implementation. That is good and we live well as the, in, in that moment. But the bad part of that is that it, we, we, as my system goes on, I will start to have a lot of that small classes and I have to build a type system in order to make that threat. And sometimes that makes us really hard to justify the use of the pattern because it's a clear trade-off. In order to have the ability and flexibility to add payment in a dynamic way, you don't have to, sh to change the shopping cart. I have to create a new class and add this class. But that thing could be better. After Java 8, we have a functional support. I love functional programming. I'm a kind of functional program expert in Brazil. And how can you do write this pattern better in a functional way using the, the functional programming? How can things get me better? Let's uh, present the interface consumer is a in default functional interface in Java, what a consumer does, it receives an object and do some processing in that and, receive, and return void. I receive some object to do some processing and in the end return void. We can use that class in your payment. Instead of having a payment class that has the method to pay, you have to create the interface and implement. You can use the consumer interface and the consumer have the method accept the accept receive object and return void. So it's the same way that we are doing our payment method in object-oriented, but it ought to have to create anything because it's a default 
a Java interface. Doing that, we can use the same way that the strategy from the ob object-oriented programmer. You can pass a lambda expressions. Instead of having to create the whole hierarchy that you used to have with ob object-oriented programming, you can pass lambda expression, use the consumer, and just use the accept method. So you don't have to clear and don't have to create a whole type hierarchy in order to have the strategy pattern and to have the benefits. But in, my question is, if you work, probably everybody works with a real uh, production case, your methods doesn't look like one line, never. You have to be, make that methods bigger. One way to do that, you extract that method to a static class. You have a class and some static methods, and then you can have other great feature of functional programming. You can have method reference and pass the method of reference of the class. So it's really more cleaner. And if sometimes your method credit, credit becomes bigger, you can extract that for other class and consume. So that one, sorry for my, 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 my type. I have to change my no notebook and that's why my fonts look weird. That's the strategy pattern that function. I have the same benefits of having an object-oriented pattern, and, but in a cleaner way, you don't have to create the type hierarchy. We just have to put your consumer interface and use that consumer, okay? The next one is the decorator. The decorator helps us to attach additional responsibilities to an object in a dynamic way. Decorates provide a flexible alternative to subclassing for extended functionality. I don't know if you, everybody agrees with me, but I have, when I was a junior developer, I have a kind of trauma with decorator patterns because my first contact with Java was with that. When I have to write a file, I have to, I even doesn't know well ob object oriented programming and I try to open a file and write a file in Java. I have this chain of constructor and I don't know what's that. But in the end, the decorator is really good. And let's see an example of how you can use a decorator. I have an item and this item have a lot of extras. For instance, I can have shipping, taxes and packing. If you're not using a pattern, probably as these things is optional, you have two options without the pattern. Or you create a lot of subclasses, for instance, item with international shipping, item with international shipping and taxes, and your code will become a mess because you have to create a lot of types. Or you have a lot of booleans that become a, a, a big if else, if else, if else chain. It becomes hard to test and debug. When you have a special class and you have a lot of extras, that's the point that you can use a decorated pattern. Let's see how you can do that for instance, in our class, in a, let's see how we can do it in an object-oriented way. We have, a, again, another interface. This interface has the get price method. And I have an item and a book. A book implement an item and have get price method. Just implementation of my interface. That's the class that will be decorated. Then I put the item extras. That's the, the trick for to build the decorator. And the, it's an abstract class that also implements item and have the get, get, uh, get price method. See that get price is a, uh, is a item that are received in the constructor for that class. I pass a book, for instance, for that decorator and then get the get price of the book. When I need to decorate that, what I do? I extend uh, item extra class and add my behavior that would like to change. For instance, here I would like to take the price of the book and add, add five other example if i want to have gift packing for if each book or if decorator one uh, uh, i i add 15 to to the super get price it's important to pay attention that this eating extras is also a item i think extra is also item so you can combine this decorator and chain them together let's see how we can do that in, in a practice i create a book the price is 10 when I decorate that book, international delivery, the price become 15. If I do further than that, I add also gift packing for international delivery, and can I have the chain of the uh, thir 13? I have the international delivery and gift packing. If I want to put more behavior, I create that chain. But also, again, I have to pay the trade-off because I have to, to create this pattern to solve my problem. I have to create a type again. Sometimes it's good to create a type and sometimes doesn't. And when you are using um, 
object-oriented patterns in a, in just a, a in a in an object-oriented code, you have to pay this trade-off even when we when you don't need that. But with function, I can use functional programming to do that. I create a function, and that function get a, a, a integer and returns an integer. For instance, take a value and return a value plus 15. And I can use that default uh, a function from Java to have the same behavior of the decorator. When I do the apply for a price, I can add 15 for that method. It's the same thing that we have in, in, with decorators in object-oriented programming. Then I can create other functions and apply again and have integer taxes. But you can go even better with functional programming because we have a method, it's and then method. I can combine functions and construct just one function that uh, that have the value of the both the both functions combined. Then I can put all that functions together and create a chain and have the same behavior that I have with the decorator from the object and programming. So when I create my new item, I have a set item extras or pass this constructor a chain of functions and that chain of functions can be combined and applied to that price so I, I adding dynamic responsibility to my decorator and in order to create a, a, a decorator pattern it's good because I can have the same benefits of doing everything that I used to do with a decorator in object oriented programming without have to create the, the, the type class so it's a good example of the how to use but again if you are thinking oh, I my functions need to be reused I, I would like to b build bigger functions I can again do the same and extract classes for that function see it's the same signature it's a function that receives an integer and returns an integer so I put in separate class and then I can pass this the decorated class for my item as a parameter constructor so with functional programming, I hope two patterns uh, uh, you are already seen with me. You can write again and revisit all the design patterns and can write better and clean code using the default class. The next one, sorry, the next one is a template. Template has a, a big definition from the Goff book, but I, I always like to see examples. When I use a template, when I have to, when I look at a method, the method does a lot of things that I already want to do. But I want to change one line in the method. I have to change a, li a little, a little line somewhere and reuse that method. Let's see how can we read that in object-oriented programming. I can, I have to create an abstract class. See, the process method is the method that I would like to use again. But I have to change something in the in the beginning, before the processing, and after the processing, I would like to add some behaviors. In order to do that, I have to transform my class for abstract class so I, again I'm creating a type hierarchy for that just to follow the pattern then I have to do to have two abstract methods to hook my new code on that then when I when I want to decorate that class for instance VIP bank and extended banking I add the, the, the code that will be called before and the code for the line bank that will be called after so I have to create that type hierarchy. We, I can do really better with functional programming again, for instance. I use the same consumer API that we see two patterns before and use that same consumer API to apply for that object. So again, I have the same template pattern, but write really better with functional programming. The next one is the observer. The observer is when you have to create a relationship between the objects in a decoupled way. It will be weird because I have changed the fonts. But for instance, I have an exchange rate server. This exchange rate, you can register for that. You can put publish a uh, new exchange. And you want to decoup, decoup all the consumers for that. The, the consumers will receive, no, receive notifications each time that a new exchange rate was published. And I want to do that in a decoupled way. By the clip, the way I mean, the the banks doesn't want to know about the exchange rate, and the exchange rate server doesn't want to know who is connected to that. To do that in object-oriented programming, I create two interface: a object, a subject, and an observer. The subject you you have the ability to register observers, and the observers is a method that will be called 
by the subject to notify the new changes. For instance, um, the, a bank is an observer and have a notify implementation for each uh, exchange rate, and the investor is an observer that have also a notify method. Our, our observee, the, the, the subject, is an exchange rate server that implements subject, and you can register uh, observers to that, and each time, each new exchange rate, it calls all the observers that was registered. How can I use that? For instance, uh, I create a bank, I create investor, and, and create exchange server. I register the, the, the observers, and when I call a new exchange rate, propagates the call for observers. But uh, we can, the observer has only one functional method. For sure, we can use that in a functional way. You can write that, again, it's a just an implementation that has only one method that even is not a real object because I don't have state, I don't have anything. It's just a method that I have to create to respect the pattern. How can I do that in a, with functional programming? I can create lambdas and register the observers in a dynamic way. I can create uh, if lambdas and that lambdas can be extracted for other class if it was big, but if it doesn't, I can hook my web service, for instance, a Microsoft or something, and make a call in the register. So again, I can have the same behavior of the observer without have to have to create the type class. The last one is not a real pattern, is a technique from functional programming that, re that can be really useful for Java developers, but that we are not, not everybody knows that the technique is currying. What is currying? Currying is really good when we to, when you want to build functions through partial, partial evaluation of other functions. But what that means? Again, you are in a functional programming talk, where you show you some mathematics, but just to have the example, not too much. I have a function fxy, it's just x divided by y divided by x. I would like to apply two and three for that function. First, I will apply two, f2y equals y divided by two, and I will call that function by g. So g, y is go equals f2 y equals y2 when I apply 3 do you see I will replace uh, everything but for G points of perspective it just one call because with curring I can kind of eat some parameters and have some parameters by default but wh why that is important for us for instance one a common thing is conversion to a threshold to final H and for conversion involves a conversion factor and some case and some cases a, a, a just factor. For instance, to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit, I have a conversion factor of nine divided by five, by five, and the just factor of thirty-two. Let's write that, but I will write that in a kind of different way. Different way. You see uh, in some slides why I'm do that. I will write a conversion function function that will be received the number that you would like to convert, the conversion factor, and the baseline, if you want to add something. It will become x, plus, uh, x times f plus b. When I use that to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, I pass 9, plus, uh, nine divided by 5 and 32, and the, re the re result will be 69, okay? Then, how can I use Courier uh, programming to do that, Courier functions in order to be, make that better? I will create, instead of my converter, my, my, my regular converter, I will create a fabric of functions. W net operator is just a function that receives a double. You do that to avoid casting and to avoid that kind of stuff. But instead of having three parameters and do x versus uh, the, the, the conversion factor plus my number plus, plus, the bez, uh, plus the baseline, I will create a function that will receive a double and then you multipl multiply by f, is conversion factor, plus my baseline. That is curring. I, I'm receiving two, pa two parameters, and you see I I'm, I'm put that parameter as a full and create a new one. Then I can generate my functions factory. With our example, is our best way to do that. I will create a function, see my current converter, I will pass as f. 9 divided by 5 and 32 and that will generate a new function that when I receive an, a double 
I will take that double and, and multiply per nine by F and, and plus be the conversion factor. So I generate a new function by a partial applying and that is curing. But why that's useful for us? We can use the same curing function to create another converter because it's a generic way for mathematics that converter. I can convert for kilometers to miles, for instance, passing 0.62 for each kilometer I multiply for 6.1 and we don't have baseline so it will become zero. So I, I did the same function generator using curing to create and to eat that two parameters and apply them as a default and generate a different functions. But I can go further than that. In Brazil, I use it to work a lot with uh, exchange banks and you can use your same converter, your same currying technique. That's why currying is really good because you can map uh, traditional mathemat mathematical things that are distributed in your code and make them as default as fabric generator. Then I create the same converter to convert Brazilian real to dollar and the baseline is zero and create a function that each time there I, I put a Brazilian real converts to dollar. Or I can even go further because I can convert because in order to make a buy euros in Brazil, you have to buy dollar first and then convert for dollars for euros. As I am building functions, I can leverage in all the arsenal of functional programming to combine them in a functional way. Okay? I have uh, uh, um, some minutes to talk here more in, for some questions that was a big talk for me sorry for my size I will fix that it's a big talk that I present on Sunday it slides on my Twitter it's like 10 or 12 patterns the same way I hope you guys have enjoyed that thank you